What's going on everyone and welcome to the channel. My name's Jack and I'm a chef by trade and my whole purpose for this channel is to give you 100% confidence in the kitchen as well as teach you absolutely everything I know. So in this one, we're going to be making alio e olio, which is a bit of a tongue twister I know, but it literally translates to garlic and oil. This recipe is so fresh, so easy to make and tastes so good. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. All right guys, let's start this off with six cloves of freshly peeled garlic and all we're going to do is slice them as thin as we can get them. For this recipe, we don't want to overpower it with garlic, so slicing them like this won't release as much allicin, which is the compound which gives garlic its strong potent flavor. For the next ingredient, here is a quarter of a bunch or 10 grams of flat leaf parsley, and with this, we're just going to scrunch it up into a nice tight bunch to make it easier to chop. We can then grab a really sharp knife and chop this up as fine as we can. And you don't have to chop it up super fine, but I do find it's better for flavor as we don't want the pasta to be overpowered by the parsley if there is to be any big leaves throughout it. Now to cook some spaghetti, place a medium to large size saucepan filled half full with water onto your stovetop over a high heat, then season the water with one and a half tablespoons of sea salt flakes and bring the water to a boil. Once boiling, we can then add in 300 grams or 10.5 ounces of spaghetti and allow it to sit half out of the water for 15 to 20 seconds to soften it, which will make it easier to twist into the water. Once we have it fully submerged in the boiling water, we then want to cook this about 75% of the way through, which will be two minutes less than what your packet instructions state. So in my case, instead of cooking this for nine minutes, I'm going to cook it for seven minutes. In the meantime, place a large heavy base skillet onto your stovetop over a high heat and straight away pour in one third of a cup or 80 milliliters of high quality olive oil into the cold pan. To this, we can chuck in our thinly sliced garlic cloves to create a cold infusion and gently stir the garlic continuously through the oil just until it starts to sizzle. Once we have some sizzling happening, this is where we need to be really careful as we don't want the garlic to brown. So what we want to do is continue mixing it the whole time for roughly one minute or just until you see the tiniest bit of color occurring on the garlic. Once you start to see the slightest bit of color on the garlic and the pasta is cooked 75% of the way through, spoon or ladle out half a cup or 120 milliliters of the pasta water and very carefully add it to the oil and garlic. With this, you'll notice it will bubble away quite vigorously to which we're going to allow it to do so for 30 seconds to create an emulsion between the water and the oil. After 30 seconds, we can proceed by adding in the spaghetti, also bringing along some more of that water, and don't worry about it being too watery as the spaghetti will soak it up along with the oil, giving our spaghetti a beautiful glossy look and saucy texture. Once that's done, we can then turn this off the heat and add in one teaspoon or one gram of dried chili flakes for a nice mild kick, and then give this a really good mix, coating the spaghetti in the oil and water emulsion to get it nice and glossy and to evenly disperse the chili flakes. We can then add in half a teaspoon or a small pinch of sea salt flakes, one teaspoon or 10 cracks of black pepper, and finally, we can add in that chopped flat leaf parsley. We can then give this another thorough mix, making sure that everything is well distributed through the spaghetti, which we can then remove from the stovetop and gently twist into our serving bowls. For greater presentation, you can spiral the spaghetti around a carving fork, but I don't own one, so twisting it in is close enough, and then this leads us to the part that makes this all worth it, which is that we can then dig in. You seriously have to try this one. The simplicity of the ingredients just makes them taste so fresh and so tasty. This recipe is perfect size for two people and can easily be doubled, tripled, and so on. And to store this, we can place this in an airtight container in the fridge where it will last up to three days, or we can place it in the freezer in an airtight container where it will last up to three months. To reheat it, we can place it in a skillet back over a medium heat, add a splash of oil to get things moving around again, and then just heat it up till it's nice and hot or you can chuck it in the microwave for a minute or two, just do whatever's easier for you. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I was able to teach you something. If you did, be sure to smash that like button and consider subscribing to see hundreds of more fantastic recipes. Thanks for watching everyone, stay safe and enjoy.